The Wildcats had their eyes on March. This is the best time for me. Uh, I'm just so happy right now. I cannot wait to go out there and just have a lot of fun. Kentucky says it's in a good place mentally, but physically has been a challenge. Point guard Xavier Wheeler hasn't played since early February. Star guard Kaysen Wallace missed the last game due to an ankle injury. And C.J. Frederick has played limited minutes due to nagging injuries. They both went through full practice and uh, see how they feel in the morning when we go to uh, go to shoot around. And coaches say if Wallace and Frederick are feeling healthy enough to play, they'll give it a go. You want to keep the rhythm going. You want to keep uh, the intensity that that your body has to take um, for playing the minutes that he's played, and 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 also you want to start loosening it up. I feel like my team is, you know, built for the, these type of situations. So you know, can't wait for it. But injury and people are taking. I'm taking time to recover too little bit to be ready for uh, for the tournament. Many teams right now, everybody like down because of um, long season. But this is not the time everybody got to be waiting. So for us, we believe we're going to be waiting. Some people might ask why wait and play? Why wait until the NCAA tournament instead of playing right here now in Nashville? And the coaches said it's important to try to shake that rust off since they missed a few games throughout this season. So we'll keep a close eye on Kentucky as they take on Vanderbilt in the SEC tournament. We'll have updates later on coming up at 6, and the game tips off around 9.30. I'm Dominique Yates, WLKY Sports. All right, thanks, Dominique. Video game fans rejoice. The Louisville Arcade Expo is back for its 12th year. You can play over 350 arcade games, ranging from pinball to Dance Dance Revolution to Atari. It's going on today through Sunday at the Triple Crown Pavilion on Plantside Drive in J-Town. There will also be vendors, tournaments, and a costume contest. Around 5,000 people are expected to attend. There are certain things that you just cannot replicate. Even though the technology is better, there's a specific certain something, just the feel of a joystick, the click of a Nintendo zapper, the crunch of that sound that can't be replicated today. Tickets can be purchased online or at the door. All ages are welcome to attend. All right, let's turn now to the weather. It's windy and chilly mm -hmm. as we head into the weekend. Jay Cardosi is here to tell us what we can expect tonight. It really does feel like winter is hanging on there, Jay. Yeah, no question about it. Those temperatures all day long, a mix of low and middle 40s, holding steady as we talked about yesterday on top of that with the wind. And it was kind of gusty from time to time, still is, but with the wind, it's been feeling like the 30s, and that's what you want to dress for if you have some outdoor plans on your Friday evening. But hey, it's the weekend, right? Now, heading out, be safe, have a great time. Right now, we're talking about mostly cloudy skies across the better part of the metro and much of the viewing area. A chilly 43 degrees in town, humidity running 57%, a northwest breeze at 11, but gusting higher than that. Right now, the feel like as you walk outdoors, in the mid and upper 30s. For all the clouds, nothing showing up on the radar scan. And folks, I think it will be dry as we push through the evening. Matter of fact, the clouds will slowly try to break up as the night wears on. Boy, we've got upper 30s off to the north to the low and middle 40s across the Commonwealth. And these numbers will stay put or slowly drop off as the evening hours unfold. Couple of 42s right through 8 o'clock. We'll dip into the upper 30s by 11 o'clock tonight. Hey, the weekend forecast still looks on track as one day this weekend looks fine for outdoor activities as long as you're bundled up. The other one, eh, not so much. That complete weekend forecast, Rick, it's coming up next. I got St. Patrick's Day parade tomorrow. Hope is that one, Jay. That's right. <laughs> All right, thank you. Louisville's jail is working to address years-long staffing issues. Now officers from New York's Rikers Island are playing a key role in the effort still ahead. And another robust jobs report. We have a breakdown and reaction from the White House next on the News at 5.
You're watching WLKY News. A gunman killed six people in a rampage at a Jehovah's Witness Center in Germany's second largest city. The man took his own life after police arrived. Eight people were also wounded, including a woman who was 28 weeks pregnant. She lost the baby. Authorities say the suspected gunman was a 35-year-old German national. Police said that he left the congregation voluntarily, but apparently not on good terms about a year and a half ago. The House voted unanimously to declassify U.S. intelligence information about the origins of COVID-19. Today's vote was a sweeping show of bipartisan support just a day before the third anniversary of the start of the deadly pandemic. It was a final approval of the bill, sending it to President Biden's desk to be signed into law. The World Health Organization declared the coronavirus outbreak a pandemic on March 11, 2020. The U.S. added a higher than expected 311,000 jobs in February. It's the latest sign of a hot labor market despite the Federal Reserve's best efforts to cool it down. Christopher Salas is in Washington and our bureau there with reaction to the report. Rick Jennifer, this jobs report is a critical piece of data for the Federal Reserve when determining how high to raise interest rates moving forward. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell says they could get more aggressive if it calls for it. Another month, another higher than expected jobs report. Today's job numbers is clear. Our economy is moving in the right direction. In February, 311,000 jobs were added to the economy, while the unemployment rate ticked up slightly. The part that pleased me the most about the report, the jobs report, is people who've been staying out of the job market are moving back in. What's pleasing economists in this report, wage increases grew at their slowest rate in a year. Why is that good for inflation? Wages Increasing at a rapid rate means that the costs that the companies have increase at a rapid rate, and they've then got to pass that on to prices. But as inflation remains stubbornly high, the Federal Reserve says it will continue its aggressive fight. The data we've seen so far uh, this year suggests that the ultimate level of rates will need to be higher. Meanwhile, the fight over the debt ceiling is also ramping up. It's become a bargaining chip in budget talks for both the White House and House Republicans. The, the two sides placing blame if the country does not raise its borrowing limit. You know, they're threatening to fall on our national debt. In fact, planning to fall, as some Republicans seem to be doing, puts us very much at risk. It's a false threat. If he defaults, it's on him. He would be choosing to. Some economists warn that the greatest threat to the economy at the moment is the mere risk of the country defaulting on its debt. In Washington, I'm Christopher Salas, WLKY News. The next number to watch is the Consumer Price Index. New inflation numbers are expected out next Tuesday. Now, your WLKY weather with Chief Meteorologist Jay Cardosi. All right, what a chilly Friday afternoon across the region. Live look at the Jefferson Animal Hospital's camera off the outer loop. The gray skies continue to be quite thick overhead. Those low clouds are. And you can see those trees in the distance still kind of whipping around in those breezes just a little bit. Wow, what an edge for uh, pretty much start to finish. I mean, it's been gusty, it's been cold. 43 degrees, the latest number. The feel like temperature still in the middle and upper 30s with that northwesterly breeze between 10 and 15 miles per hour. So if you're heading out, just dress for what we have right now because not a lot will change. Holding on to mostly cloudy skies next several hours, breezy and chilly conditions. Right now, all across the metro, we're talking low 40s. And the farther north and northeast you go, you get into some 30s up the I-71 corridor. Also here in southeastern portions of Indiana. Right now, upper 30s, 37 to 38 degrees. And then from the metro and points south, low and middle 40s just a day with temperatures well below average and this cold pattern it's pretty much locked in certainly for the next several days look at the snowflakes flying off to the northeast of us that's the system that brought us a little bit of rain here last night now we're just dealing with the low level moisture the low clouds those clouds will slowly try to break up as we move through the night, but again, it's going to be pretty slow. There are your temperatures for your Friday evening, upper 30s and low 40s. At least it will be on the dry side. Now, when you wake up in the morning, look for partly cloudy skies, more dry conditions on your Saturday morning, 
but chilly weather. Low and middle 30s will greet you in the morning. Tomorrow, folks, is still the pick of the weekend. We're expecting a mix of clouds and sunshine in the morning. Clouds will thicken up in the afternoon, but I think it will stay dry. And that bodes very well for the St. Patrick's Day Parade going on tomorrow, 3 o'clock, as temperatures will climb to near 50. And then the rain chances will go way up as we move into tomorrow night. And they're going to linger into Sunday morning. Look at Sunday afternoon, just 45 degrees. Don't forget to change that clock ahead one hour before you go to bed tomorrow night. Remainder of your seven-day forecast, we're expecting a chance for a spotty sprinkle, maybe even a stray snowflake to mix in on Monday with your high 40. We will come out of it, though, 55 Wednesday. We could be very close to 70 degrees by next Thursday as we get a quick little warm-up in here. But, yeah, this weekend, early next week, mm. keep the coats handy. <laughs> Wash the car Thursday. I'm looking at washing my car because it needs it, so Thursday. Get all the gunk Almost off. Almost 70. Why not? Yeah, even though a little rain may come in late next week, okay. I, I agree. Get the gunk <laughs> off. Wash my car if you want to. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I guess you. I'm washing cars on Thursday. <laughs> there you go. All right, Jay, thank okay. you. Thanks, Jennifer. More money for your miles. The IRS is making a major change to how much you can deduct on your taxes. But do you qualify? We're getting you the facts next. Leaving no veteran behind, an award-winning equine therapy program is expanding. How it will help even more vets, still ahead on WLKY News. But first, so let's take a look at your lottery jackpots. Tonight's Mega Millions is $203 million, and tomorrow's Powerball jackpot, $45 million. All right, numbers from Wall Street and not good. The Dow shed 345 points. The Nasdaq was off 100 and we'll call it uh, 200 points. And the S&P 500 is down 56 and three quarters. Tonight, we are getting the facts about your taxes. If you're looking to squeeze every cent out of your refund, there's a deduction you could be forgetting about. Jeff Rawson has the details on how to get money for the miles you drive. Hi, uh, yeah, there are major changes happening to the IRS mileage rate. Since gas prices were surging so high last year, the IRS made kind of an 
extraordinary change. They rarely changed the rules in the middle of the year, but they did, increasing the amount you can deduct. The rate from January 1st to June 30th, so half the year was at 58 and a half cents a mile. But then for the last six months of the year, the IRS actually increased it by four cents. So from July 1st to the end of 2022, the rate rose to 62.5 cents per mile. There was also a change recently on who can take the mileage deduction. It's really for small business owners or if you're self-employed like an independent contractor or a rideshare driver, employees of a company are not eligible. That means if you're a W-2 employee, a staff member, you're not eligible even if your job did not reimburse you for the mileage you drove. For those of you who can file, here's what you gotta do. You gotta fill out a Schedule C form. On there, you have to say how many miles you drove during the year, answer some questions about your vehicle. And by the way, these rates apply to electric and hybrid automobiles too, not just gas vehicles. I'm gonna put all of this, because I gave you a lot of numbers and information, plus we have some more information. I'm gonna have it all nice and easy to read on RossumReports.com. Hope it helps, back to you. Well, get ready to spring forward. Daylight saving time starts on Sunday. While the extra sunshine may be a relief from dark winter days for some, it can also take a toll on your bedtime routine. A psychologist says that during daylight saving time, the extra light in the evening can keep your body from being able to prepare itself for sleep. The problem is, is that our social clocks, which are those clocks set by work and by school, don't change. And so we still have to wake up in the morning. And so by going to bed later and waking up at the same time, we end up getting less sleep. You can keep your body's clock in check through healthy sleep habits, which includes maintaining a consistent sleep and wake schedule and turning off technology at night. Coming up, he's the third officer to come to Louisville from one of the toughest jails in America. Now more are looking to apply thanks to what he's told them, how his message is helping the city's jail staffing shortage. A local dam is in danger of failing, bringing the threat of flooding. We visit the area to see what is the biggest concern for the community. That's next on the News at 530. You're watching WLKY News. 
we do a short academy for those folks and they're ready to roll. I mean, they're ready to go on the floors and, and, and start working. So it's, it's really great. New at 530, Louisville Metro Corrections is making major strides in hiring and changing the culture at the jail. For years, LMDC has been plagued by low morale and staffing issues. But tonight, the command staff says they've reached a turning point. It's thanks to a lateral program, they're now hiring experienced officers to the force. And as WLKY's Lauren Adams reports, they're quickly getting these new officers to work. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. Two months after moving to Louisville, Jay Wooten was sworn in Friday as a Louisville Metro Corrections Officer. So many people, when they found out that I was coming from New York and chose to come to Kentucky, the first thing out of their mouth said, why? The pension and quality of life were at the top of his list. He's the third Rikers Island officer to come to LMDC in recent months, thanks to a lateral program that puts them to work in a matter of weeks. This was LMDC's second lateral class graduation bring a combined total of 60 years to the department. You go through great training academies, you get training, but experience, there's no, there's no um, substitution for experience. Director Jerry Collins praised the group at their graduation. Your experience in this field is a tremendous asset to LNBC and to our community. In his nearly one year on the job, he's made 70 new hires and has 17 in a training class but admits there's much more to be done. Now to be fully staffed, Metro Correction should have about 430 officers. Even with this class, they are still about 80 officers short. But as they continue to work to fill that gap, Director Collins says they are hoping to expand programming. That includes intelligence to battle the ongoing problem of contraband and adding more drug canines. Collins says things are improving and word is getting out. An old colleague, in fact, told Wooten about LMDC. And he says about a half dozen more from Rikers are looking to apply, thanks in part to what he's told them. I came down and um, I was very welcome. We were very welcomed. They were very welcoming. Um, and it, it felt like the right place to be. Lauren Adams, WLKY News.